What's going on, Black Trimming? I know it looked a little different when I had trimmed the beard down. So I let the other growth catch up. Um, it's, it's just time to go it all in. I got the world envision black on. You dig? So I jumped in this space about 34 minutes after the fact. I popped out this evening because the brother need to pop out. I've been working on my truck all day. Um, 34 minutes in, talking about the Haitian situation going on. Uh, once again, I don't like that the white meat is making Haitians the face of this. Do I think Haitians on mass are eating pets? No. Do I think some probably could? Yeah. Uh, and if, you know, if they're out there on that stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of stuff you can do when you're out there on that, uh, you're in a bad situation. You're down bad. And their stomach is rumbling and rumbling. And um, you really got resources because they're not doing for them what they're doing for the Venezuelans and the Nicaraguans and all the other people. So make sure you tap in. No, I'm not caving for the Haitians, but I am noticing, you know, they, they like to do that with, with us. So tap in, check out the space, comment below, and um, I'm going to have a giveaway coming up. Uh, it's a brand called Nagash, N-A-G-A-S-H. I got a lot of their shoes. Family members couldn't fit them, and it don't make sense for me to send them all back when I can just give away to the family. Look forward to that coming soon. Peace and black empowerment going to see. But again, you know, I might vote for the couch. I don't know. But thank you so much, my guy. All right. Let's get some more people in here. Let's get um Kanye and then we'll get, um let me see, Paul Pastora. Kanye, then Paul Pastora. What's up, Kanye? What's going on, Tariq? It's been a minute. Yes, um, I think it's really interesting because we was hosting spaces about this last year. And the Pan-Africans, particularly the Haitians and the Nigerians, made it very clear that they can survive without Black Americans. And right. That we're not much of a factor when it comes to um, getting changes done in the world. And I find it awfully odd that they forgot that now that we're being relatively silent. And so the young guy that just spoke from Colorado, hey, people need to learn their history. They used to, they still to this day put all type of cats and dogs in their food. They call it mystery meat. As a matter of fact, they were doing it so much. They had a law where if you were selling any type of meat, you had to keep the paws on it so they make sure it was an animal they said it was and not some regular-ass house cat. So they do the same shit the Haitians doing. So I just find it odd they're trying to play all high and mighty when they eat mystery meat like that too or bush meat, whatever they call it. But it's the same shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My man, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Paul, what's up, Paul? Hey, Tariq, I appreciate you letting me come up here and talk to you for a second, man. Absolutely. Uh, I've heard some of your spaces, and I really like a lot of the stuff that you say, and, and I agree with you. And uh, there's so much that we have in common. I've been in a lot of spaces with what you may have heard around called the Unity Party, which was when, when MAGA and Maha RFK and that unification there. And it brought a lot of people together. Okay. And, um, and you know, I, I don't know if, you know, kind of what we're all doing right now is, yeah, we're all getting behind Trump, right, for this election. And uh, but after this election is over, you know, the reason why we're getting behind him is because we're trying to open new doors to maybe, you know, this is almost like a third party, right? Because the the old Republican Party, the neocon party, we're the ones that are weeding it out from the inside, right? Like this MAGA yeah. movement that's that's going on. We're 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 trying to get rid of it from within. And um we represent something greater. And a lot of people, when the RFK people joined us, they learned real quick, hey. You MAGA people aren't what we were told, you know, they, they realize quickly, no, we're all about making America healthy again, the children and all that. And um, I want all of our neighborhoods to be safer. I want your neighborhoods to be safer. I want my neighborhoods to be safer. You know, I, I live in Los Angeles and uh, I always get discouraged when I see all these promises that are given to the black community and I drive through it and I work through it sometimes and I go, why do they keep voting Democrat? Why? When they've been promised so much for so long and like i mean they don't even bother cleaning the streets in some of those neighborhoods it's so easy to just send out sanitation and work and go get it clean right like i get upset because i i, I mean i live in the san fernando valley and we have some areas that are a little bit dirty around here but if it gets dirty and i make the right phone calls they'll come and clean it up mm -hmm. and i don't think it's right and um you know the number one issue for us right now I've been telling everybody, look, hey, it's a free country, man. You go vote for you think is the best person that represents you. But I ask everybody, and, and if you're not paying attention to what's going on at the border, and we're talking about, I won't get into too much detail because it's graphic, but I'll just say it like this. Understand the words that I'm saying. 
There's murder, there's rape, and there's organ harvesting that are happening right now in record numbers. And we're talking about not just a few kids. We're talking about half a million children plus in our country. And right now, that's the highest in anywhere in the world. This was allowed by open border policies, the ones that are happening right now. We got videos. We have documentation. Right now, uh, I'm, I'm spreading around a, a, an amazing interview that happened earlier today by this group that's releasing a documentary about it tomorrow. I know everybody here has family values. We want to protect our kids, right? Like that's, that's something we all have in common, right? And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Nicaraguan American, so I know the dangers of when immigrants come to our countries, you know, because my family is directly linked to protecting and, and expelling murderous Nicaraguans that come to this country. My family is involved in letting the government know you just let a murderer in here. You got to get them out of our country. These are dangerous people. And Interesting. go ahead. Because you like um, some of the black neighborhoods and the streets are dirty, whatever. Now, in Los Angeles, the black neighborhoods are not dirty. Let's let's clear that up. You go down to South Central L.A. and my I, I, we have a museum down there. South L.A. is pretty clean around. the. No, place. for sure. I don't mean all of them. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to generalize as in like, no, of course. And I've been in a lot of in a lot of neighborhoods that are that are fantastic. That's not at all. Like if you over by Mike's Deli, that's one of my favorite delis, man. I love Mike's Deli. But uh <laughs> Black LA is very clean. Now, let me just clear that up. Yeah, black- yeah. Well, I'm 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 talking more around Figueroa, right? Like where they're allowing street walkers to go openly. <laughs> and I see I see Hispanics and uh, young Hispanics and blacks there that have to be exposed to this when it could easily be enforced. But those are like homeless people and immigrants over there on Fig. You think? And that's the track. So that's not quote unquote, you know, the, the black area, so to speak. So, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. I'm just, and again, maybe it came off the wrong way. I really, that's not really my goal here. I'm just trying to say that I think that it's unfair the way, you know, they don't really address the issues that they promised to. And I, I just wish more, more of the black community would stop believing these empty promises. And they try to tell you that MAGA is dangerous and this and that. And it's like, man, I, I MAGA is always open to making America greater for all of us. Right. That and you guys are Americans. We are Americans. That's all of us, baby. Okay. Eunice. Yes, yes, sir. So, um, I'm gonna speak um as um an immigrant, and I'm also a Nigerian immigrant. And I know um one thing I want to say is that uh, uh the blame that is there that um Nigerian Americans or African African people when or people are generally immigrants when they come to the United States, like they don't associate with Black Americans or whatever. I want to blame the, because I was that I, I immigrated. I immigrated to the United States 20 years ago, and when I came here, all I knew about Black Americans is what I watched on white media TV, and everything they showed about Black Americans was very evil, was either drugs or something very bad. So I wanna, but when I came here and I went to school, I went through the history of America and all that. I came to understand more about the black Americans and I came to appreciate their culture and I came to, you know, I think one thing we have to blame education system and we have to blame the white media because most of us, huh? Where did you come from? I came initially from Kenya. Kenya, I've I've been here for 20 years, but everything I knew about black Americans, Africa was evil, was bad. You, nobody, no human being want to associate with something that is not good. And everything that they showed about white people was good, you know. So when you come here and you kind of want to distance yourself, it's like, I don't want to be around something that's not good, something that's drugs or whatever. So you come here and then, you know, then when I went to school, I did the history of America and I started to learn more about African-Americans. I came to appreciate them. I came to appreciate them a lot. And... So I want to blame the white media. And that's, and that, that's not just Africa. It's all over. It's in Asia. You meet Filipino. Everybody just thinks of African-Americans in the way they display on the media. Right. So, Hold on. We got Ray. Ray, huh? Ray Hold on. Ray, Ray. How you doing, um, Tariq? Thanks for the space. Um, I'm getting tired of um, all of these immigrants from Harris to um, now the Haitians, instead of them talking to the people and saying, look, you can't bring our culture here. You know, these people don't do that. 
They want to blame the Republicans. Oh, Trump. No, the Dominicans that y'all don't get along with, which we have always been talking to our government for years in our city. Y'all come here and y'all be enemies. So then now y'all are on the news trying to grift off another lie after we seen y'all roasting people and everything in the streets. Y'all said that was a lie. And as far as um, Miss Eunice, I feel that it's very disingenuous because we see people in Africa doing all type of inhumane things, okay? But y'all come here amongst our communities and our schools, and we don't do y'all that way. When we go to Africa, we don't do y'all that way. Do better. Thank you, Tyreek, and have a blessed um, remainder of your early morning, Thank <laughs> late you. night. Thank you. Yo, can, can I jump in now? Yeah, Kimla, go ahead, man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for having me. It's good to good to um catch up with you once again. So I just I just want to follow up in what that sister just said. I mean, what what she said was kind of right, but also there was there was a lot of like on truth to what she said. Um, I also say that obviously the, the the media has a very negative view of Black America, but also negative view of of Africa. You know. Right. Right. So it's not just Black America, also an African thing. And I re and I realized that when I came here for college, some of the most welcoming people, you know, were the were the black people, were the black students that I went, where I went to college, because it was a very very white school. But the black students were like very welcoming, very opening. They showed me that they were around about white supremacy and everything like that. So I think it, it depends on your individual. Do you want to believe the crap, the trash that is on on TV, you know, which is always negative about Black Africans, about Africans, Black African Americans. Mm -hmm. Or do you want to come and meet your own people, your brothers and sisters, and learn from them and and work together? That's all. That's all I had to say. And where are you from, by the way, Kimla? Ni Nigeria. We, we we speak very often. You know, I had to change my my whatever my Twitter because I was blocked. But yeah, from Nigeria. There you go, my man. So yeah, that's the thing. Because see, when people when y'all say, well, yeah, when we come over to America, we have to distance ourselves because of the way you were portrayed. The white man's media portrayed you in a negative way. Well, listen, how do y'all think they portray you in Africa? Do you think they portray you in a positive way? We know they portray you negative, but we, we know how they are. We don't, you know, we don't buy into it. We try to get to know you. You understand? We try to get to know you. We say, hey, you know, we were the ones telling us, no, don't, don't show them like that. Don't do them like that. We were the ones saying, hey, th those images aren't cool. We were the ones saying that. So for you guys to come over and, and what they show you a couple of rap videos, I don't know what are you watching when I when I hear this narrative that they show you so negative. What, what are they showing you? What exactly are they showing you? You understand? What TV shows are they showing you? What rap videos? What are they showing you? Because we don't have a lot of gang violence like that, is you know that's why they always emphasize the the stuff going on in Chicago. But nationwide, there's not a lot of gang violence. You understand? Not no dr the drug dealing ain't that damn significant. So what are you what are you watching? What propaganda are you being privy to? Let's get um Shaq. Let's get um. Uh, Shaq G. All right. Shaq, where you at? Uh, what up, uh, Tariq? How you doing? I'm good, man. What's going on? All right. Uh, I came up here to talk because I heard a couple people sound like they was on the side or defending people eating cats. Look, we can't compare American wild game to people eating cats and dogs. Yeah. These people, look, dude said, oh, it's people that eat weird things. Look, our wild game is not comparable to someone's pet, right? And I don't want to uh, try to soften up the blow on people that come to this country eating things that we do not consider the social norm and changing the fabric of America. We're not going to eat our pets, and I'm not going to make them feel comfortable uh, when I talk about it, right? 
Because uh, Eden say when they would leave the feet on animals, a deer and an elk are similar. So they'll leave the feet on it. A bear, they might want to know the breed of the bear. They're not passing off dog meat in America. That's never been a thing. If somebody was doing that, they was a shyster scamming people, right? Yeah. It's nobody in America history that was openly just eating dogs. That's what I wanted to say. Because it was uh, the, the Kanye guy. Sound like he was like. Oh, I'm sorry about that, man. But I got your point. Thank you so much. True school. Hop on, brother. True school. All right. True school ain't in the building. Let's get John Henry. We get true school out of here. John Henry. And waiting on John Henry's mic to turn on. John Henry, where you at, brother? All right. Let's get some more folks in here. How many people we got in here? We got almost. Hi, Oh, Henry. John Henry. Okay. Didn't expect this. There was a comment. I'm just coming in from work, and I was listening to this broadcast. Right. Um, <laughs> and Drop the gun. Drop the gun. I have a question. You got dear. Huh? What kind of job do you have this time of night? Oh, I can't be telling you all that. Well, sound like you dropped a gun. Are you a security at Amazon mm -hmm. Warehouse? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a transportation supervisor. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, uh, I live in Long Beach. Anyway, um, my question for these for that lady that got on here talking about Oh, the, I see stuff about Black Americans on TV. That's, look, oh, my thing is, why do you come here if you see such bad images of Black Americans portrayed on TV? What are you running from? It's all gravy in your country, but you over here. That's mm -hmm. what I want to know. Why are you here? Why did you bring your good fleeing coward self here? And then you want to set up here talking about, oh, I see bad images of black people on TV. Uh, did you not see the Cosby show? Did you not? It was plenty of TV shows that portrayed us in uh, better images. So I don't get what she's saying. Yeah, that's, yeah. Just a, that's just an excuse. Yeah, a lot of people think that's, um, some people think it's Cap. Stenny, what's up, man? Yo, what's up, Tariq? How you doing, Steve? Hey, I'm good, brother from Philly. Microphone check, microphone check, brother. Oh, yeah, by the way, microphone check. The new version is number one on Amazon right now. So I'm definitely going to grab that. Yes, indeed. What's on your mind, Stan? Hey, it's why everybody gets to stand in line, take turns to come up against FBA and take turns taking shots at us. I'm, yeah. I'm online. I'm seeing all these Haitians. All of a sudden, everybody got pride. Everybody knows the Haitian Revolution all of a sudden. They got their little flags and they got their profile. Excuse my language. Um, but my thing is, what soil is under their feet? It ain't mm. Haitian soil under their feet. It's FBA soil under their feet. And it seems like they're only coming after FBA. And yeah. I'm like, um, where's all this smoke for the Clintons? Let's, let's go back to the Clintons and the Clinton Foundation. And oh, the yeah. raping and the pillaging that the Clintons did. And, you know, but y'all want to come after us, and we're, we're at the bottom of the totem pole trying to fight our way up in our own homeland. But the, the soil under my feet is my homeland. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. So I, 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 don't, I don't get that. Who, who, what, who, who, what rule are y'all measuring everything by here? Mm -hmm. And then you come here, and like that, that lady that spoke earlier, um, here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. I don't care what they showed you about us. If I go to anybody's country, I'm respectful. I'm, I would never go to nobody else's backyard and just look down upon them. But see, it was another video of an African lady that's saying, I come to take. We come to take. That's what it is. These people that's over here, they, they don't care about what black Americans do. They came here to take. Yeah. They, they didn't come to build. They came to take. And I'm going to land my plane there, brother. I'm definitely going to get uh, the, the new version of the microphone check. Thank you so much. Now, Gerald, what's up, Gerald? What's going on with you, Derek? I'm good. How are you? Oh, man, I'm doing pretty good, man. But I had to sit there and had to 
disregard what he has just said, man. I'm from the Mississippi Delta. Yeah. FBA all the way, you know what I'm saying? But the thing okay. is that, man, Bill Clinton did do a lot for us. And the thing is, the Democratic Party has been doing a lot for us. Now, I ain't saying that the Republicans are bad or nothing like that, but the thing is that we are like the forgotten society. Oh, what did Bill Clinton do for us? No, I'm talking about down this way. Oh, Mississippi. Okay, what did Bill Clinton do for Mississippi? No, I, I'm not from Mississippi. I'm from Arkansas. Arkansas, okay. I'm from, well, I'm, from, I'm from Arkansas, but in the Mississippi Delta. Oh, okay. All right. Mississippi Delta, man. We do forget in society, man. This is the poorest community in Arkansas, in the whole United States of America. Okay. My thing is that, hey, man, just don't forget about us. So what and did obviously, the, Trump didn't do shit. What did Clinton do, brother? You keep kind of deflecting. What did the, the Democrats and Clinton do for you guys? Obviously, they made sure that we got better health care down here. We actually got, well, we went from food deserts to actually having grocery stores and stuff like that. Which part is a whole bunch of that. And then also having healthcare facilities that was mm -hmm. actually going on too. So man, yeah. that that was stuff that we had going on. But I can't speak for the whole nation or nothing like that, man. So but it was just right here in this area. So so you going you gonna vote for Kamala and them because they, they helped get y'all well the, the Democrats because you you feel like they helped get y'all some food down there, some food deserts, and I mean some. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I ain't vote for it. Just say you that. got some catfish nuggets, brother. Just say no, that man. Somebody, nah. somebody <laughs> nuggets. I was actually just <laughs> laughing. I was just laughing with uh one of my goddamn uh, friends or whatever. They running for city council down there. I was like, but well, shit, you probably need to have your goddamn catfish fry. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Try to win. <laughs> We got wait. We got a, a right winger in. Let me get Paul back in here to, to holler at you. We got Paul. What's up, brother? And Haitian connection, my friend. And you. And also, while you're looking at that search, look at how many journalists died investigating that connection. Just letting you know. There you go. All right. All right, Gerald. Don't give a damn. Gerald's we got his mind on them catfish nuggets and some some hush puppies right now. Don Guillermo. Guerrero, what's your name, brother? Ah, hi, my name is Guerrero. So, so I'm talking about, a, a, I'm talking from Mexico. If you're interested in you know about it's the aliens. Yes. So, uh, first of all, uh, I think it's better to, I think the best, the, the best thing to do is actually trying to explain why there are so many aliens and so many uh, immigrants there in, in the United States. So first of all, uh, you must know that we got one of those socialist, um, so socialist government here in Mexico since uh, 2018. Yeah. So the the story goes like this: uh, there is there is a lot of aliens, a lot of Africans, a lot of uh, Central American uh, uh, immigrants here in Mexico. So the problem is not actually that they are still in the south border. Not your south border, our south border. That is uh, a state of Chiapas. Uh, the, the the fact is that actually there is about there is above uh, like twenty thousand of them in the city of Mexico, the capital, and there is. I don't know what you're talking about, brother. I mean, you just lost me. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, let me get some more people. All right, sometimes people, you need to come on in and just go right on in. I don't. Yes, you're trying to set up a narrative. I don't know where you're going. I didn't. Did y'all understand where he was going? I, you w w listen with me. You got to get right to the point. I give you a few minutes, but you got to get to the point. I don't like long, drawn out stuff. Listen, hey, listen. I'm from Mexico. Listen, I, I, there's a helicopter on a mountain, and then I had to ride my my donkey up the mountain with coffee beans. And then it is the biggest mountain in 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 Guadalajara. And I I rode down on it with my coffee beans and my donkey. And then I got on the plane. And I'm like, what is he saying? What I don't know what you're saying. I don't know where you're going. I don't know what you're saying, man. Y'all just got to get to the point. Don't tell me about you and your donkey. I don't know. I don't know where you're going with it. Just get to the point. 
Let's get to the point. Let's get um Gurinder. Gurinder. All right. Let's get Gurinder in the building. And um True School, you want to try it again? I tried to get you up and I didn't get nothing. True School, what's happening? Right, True School, you here? Hey, how you doing, Drake? I'm good, man. What's going on? Hey, man, sorry about that last time. I thought my headphones was going to work, but oh. nah. Okay. Uh, yeah, man, I just wanted to make one point about uh, Kamala that nobody's really making about her being a uh, vice president and everything. People are trying to make the point of saying, well, she's in the vice presidency. She doesn't really have this much power and all of that. Uh, and she can't really do nothing. And I, I said, uh, I, y'all obviously don't remember Dick Cheney. Oh, yeah. Dick, Dick Cheney was getting stuff done. Yeah. Dick Cheney was like damn, the, the damn white Suge Knight in Washington. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he, another, he, he, much, man, another thing about Kamala, everybody's pointing out how basically they were running interference with her, for her at the debate with Trump. Basically, Trump was debating the moderators. And one of the moderators is Kamala's sorority sister. She's a fellow AKA. So there's a lot of bias there. And see, this is significant. How come they can't let Kamala speak on her own without somebody holding her hand or running interference for her? That's not a good look. They can't let this woman speak on her own two feet without somebody holding her hand, throwing her softball questions. It has to be some type of rigged setting where somebody's assisting her. She never can just stand on her own. Even when she did that CNN interview, she had to have Tim Waltz sitting there with her and it had to be pre-recorded. You have to make all of these concessions to have her sit down. It's never you're sitting down with this woman and just having a real one-on-one talk and she's coming off the cuff with her own views and ideas. It's always um, other people having to assist her. Have you noticed that that woman has not said anything or done anything without somebody holding her damn hand? Nothing. And that's a problem. And people can see that. That's why her her numbers ain't what people think they are. I want y'all to understand these pollsters, and, and right now, I think in many of these significant states, I think they got Trump beating her now in some of the early polls. I don't even think it's that close either. And listen, these pollsters, what I think, you have a lot of people, you know, they're, they're saying they're supporting Kamala because it's like you don't want to be shamed, but... It's going to be just like Hillary Clinton, just like Hillary Clinton, when she was running against Trump, they had her up in the preliminary polls. They had her in the pre-polls. They had her up. They had a lot of people saying that they would support her. And but when election time came, Trump got in that ass. The people didn't come out like that. The, The poll numbers didn't reflect the actual voting numbers. It was different. I think it's going to be the same thing with Kamala because truth be told, you don't see too many, we don't really see too many black people like that stomping for Kamala. The ones you see are like entertainers who are basically doing the job of their um, corporations or paid shills or the divine nine boule class, you know, people who are trying to get brownie points for their sorority. You understand, but you don't see just regular run-of-the-mill people, really, especially young people. That's another thing. You don't see too many of them just really stomping for Kamala Harris. That's who they're fighting for. They're they're fighting for that young black vote. That's why they have to have all of these rap concerts and twerking and all of that. They're really trying to pander to, to them. And a lot of the young people are not as energized as they're trying to make it seem. For Kamala. They're just not. Yeah. Very interesting. AJ. Let's get AJ in the building. AJ. What's up, AJ? It's good, brother. What's going on, man? How are you? 
Great. All right, what's on your mind? Oh, nothing. Just joined. I uh, wanted to hear about uh, your opinion on the the Haitians, the backlash going on. I heard you speaking about uh, Kamala Harris as well, and how everyone's every young person is trying to get, you know, she's trying to get every black person's vote for it. So, mm-hmm. now, now yeah. you, what, what about the Haitians? Did you want to hear? Oh no, I was just trying to hear your opinion on it. That was it. Uh, this was just tuned in just now. So, oh, okay. Oh well, shit. We've been yeah. talking for an hour. So, what's your views on the Haitians? Now, where are you from? Are you Haitian? Oh no, I'm uh, I'm Bayesian. My my family's Bayesian. Uh, I live in Philly though. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So, Shout yeah. out to Barbados. Shout out to them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, well, there you go. So yeah, you have to listen to the playback. All right. Let's see, Jazzy Man. Jazzy. Yes. Hello, Jazzy. How are you? Yes. Jazzy, how can I help you? Hello. Okay. Hello. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. What do you what do you what do you need? Hello. Do you know any other word besides hello? Yeah. What's the word? If you say hello one more time, I'm getting your ass out of here. Do you know any other words besides hello? Hello. All right, your ass is up out of here. Hello, the hell up out of here. All right. Let's get um Roni in here. <laughs> Don't try to request get back up here. That ain't happening. Roni, what's up, man? Roni, what's up, brother? Wait, wait, I didn't add you. My bad. Hold on. I thought I added you. All right, Roni, what's happening? Hop on in, sir. Hello. What the hell is that? What, Roni, where are you calling from again, Roni? I'm calling from Biafra land, bordering Nigeria and Cameroon. So are you, are you in Nigeria or are you in Cameroon? I am in Biafra land in Nigeria presently. You're in Nigeria. Okay, there you go. what's on your mind? Yeah, I want to tell uh, you know Americans how fake Kamala Harris is. We have been watching them from Africa here and we are standing strong with Trump. We want America to be great again. So whatever you see going on on the, I don't know, I watch the in that tell. Uh, um, uh, um, recent uh, presidential debate. I was, I know, I saw how they were doing everything to gang Donald Trump. It was very, very fake. All those, uh, you know, uh, uh, things that Kamala Harris was just, just trying to play on your intelligence. Don't allow it happen. America is time to take your country back and put it at the right track. Africans and the rest of the world are watching you. That's what's on my mind. Thank you for having me. Thank you, brother. Half the shit I didn't understand nothing he was saying, to be honest. But, you know, I let him speak his piece. I don't know what he was saying. He was very passionate about it. I couldn't understand nothing. And he's let you say, Kamala is a pick, and oh, that nigga is going to ban us. She is garbage. I want to make America great again for you niggas. And I would like to work. And I am going to cook some bush meat right now. Thank you so much as I land my plane. I'm like, okay. What the hell? My brother was all over the place. Um, Ellis. What's up, Ellis? Man, I'm trying to just tap in, man. I'm, I'm on my um on my laptop. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, yeah, I got you. We can hear you. Man, I wanted to hit you up, man. I went and bought your, uh, that movie microphone check, man. I ain't been able to watch the movie yet, man. I can't find nobody who got a Blu-ray, man. What's going on? You going to put it on that FBA stream or what's going on with it's, that? Yeah, probably going to put it on there. 
but we are we wanted to put it on get it on Amazon so that people can see the numbers publicly and just see how good it's doing publicly. But yeah, people do everybody got a damn Blu-ray player because they got Xboxes and PS3s and stuff like that. And those play Blu-rays. So that's why the DVDs are, and the Blu-rays are selling so good. People still you got a plate, you got an Xbox or something? I got an old ass Xbox 360. I try to put it in here, it won't work. Oh, well, shit. I got to right. step it up. Yeah, you got to step it up. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good film, man. But we will have it on FBA in a couple of weeks, though. But real good film, man. You'll love it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, bro. All right. Let's get um, Radical. Radical in the building. Hey. Hey, What's up, Trick. How you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you, Radical? Pretty good. Great. Big fan of you. Uh, love what you're doing for for our race. Um, nobody does. Nobody's done. I think what you've done. I mean, it's just amazing. I won't I, waste a lot of time. I just want to. Now, what, now, where are you from? You sound. I, ha, I hear a British accent. Where are you from? Yeah, I, I'm British and and American. Uh, long, long, uh, long story. <laughs> but um, I just want to make. One quick point about Gavin Newsom, the Gavin Newsom controversy. I yes. think it's very interesting. I think, um, you know, I'll just say this and leave. You know, you can kind of play it and feel. I think that he uh, is stalling the reparations decision uh, until they install. If I, I like to use that term because I think that's what's really happening. Kamala Harris as the uh, president. You know, it's their liberal win. And then they will approve some partial reparations. It just seems like a setup that they're just trying to create a, a fake win. What do you think? Yeah, well, yeah, we knew that um, they were going to try to pull a whammy bammy. Um, they were trying to find ways to to crash out the reparations bill for a long time with little tricky language, but we wouldn't let them do that. So they just said, okay, in a last ditch effort, we got to crash this thing out before there's too many expectations on it. And that's good that they crashed it out because now we can see the Democrats for the deceptive liars that they are and not support them. We should go out of our way to not support them. Um, Nikki, hop on dear. Hi. Um, People are talking about they're asking, a lot of people are asking how I'm going to vote or, you know, and I should listen to both parties. But I've already decided that I don't want anything to do with the Democrats because they're like a nasty, no good ex-boyfriend. They've done me wrong so many times. I don't I don't even if even if Kamala came up with a plan and said, hey, I want to provide you guys with lineage based reparations. I would not believe her and her party. I would just I would just assume that it was a trick bag. That doesn't mean that I am trying to vote for Trump because I haven't seen him really provide us with anything either, but I would never this is just my opinion. I would never trust the Democratic Party. I also came up to remind people that the Flex Tro album just went live and it's available for sale. I just put it up in a jumble time. Have a good night. Thank you, dear. So yes, get that Flex Pro album, Grinding for a Green Card. Speaking of immigrants, grind, it's a great album. Very funny. Very funny songs. We got Grinding for a Green Card. That's the hit single off of it. Uh, Musty Tether, that's another one. Uh, there's a great song called Bush Meat. Um, there's some slower, more mellow jams like Cake Soap Love. Um, there's another song, kind of uh, not quite a ballad, but kind of a slower mid tempo one called Forehead Forever. It's about folks with them big foreheads. Um, just a lot of real cool songs. My favorite song, we got um, a song called Janky Hairline. And there's a remix that's real funky, 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 funky stuff. So you guys are going to love the album, Grinding for a Green Card. It's streaming on all platforms. You can buy it on iTunes. Get it on iTunes now, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Let me see. Let's get uh, a lot of folks in here. Let's get Ann Stone in the building. Let's get Ann Stone in the building. Ann, how are you, dear? Miss Ann? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? 
I'm fine. Um, Nikki brought up a good point. I just wanted to speak on. She's she's saying that the Democratic Party, she won't trust them no matter if they do um, push for the reparations. I just want to know how many other people feel that way. I think a lot of people, man, there's such a lack of trust for the Democrats at this point, and people are just so turned off by them and the lies and they are prioritizing these other groups and flooding them over here like this and just weird stuff happening to us. A lot of people, a lot of black people are really just turned off from them. And here's the thing. We got to understand black people. We got to leverage our power. We are the base of the Democrats. Our black voting block, that's the base. And we have to be very strategic with it. We have to stop letting these people treat us like political property, like we're supposed to vote for them. They just take it for granted. And if we keep sitting here voting for nothing, that sets a horrible precedent. Especially now, we vote for the Democrats now. That sends a horrible message. That lets them know we don't have to do anything for these Negroes and they'll show up. Not only do we have to not do anything for them, we can disrespect them and they'll still vote for us. We can tell them in their faces, I ain't going to do nothing that's only going to benefit Black people, and those dumb Negroes still voted. You dig? We would look like the biggest dumbasses ever voting for the Democrats in mass right now. You want to talk about lack of respect. You want to get respect? Get respect by doing power moves. A power move is letting the Democrats crash and burn. That's a power move because that shows discipline. People who show discipline, that's when you get respect. When you can say, hey, we're going to discipline ourselves and we're going to hold our vote from them. And you're not going to scare us with Trump or anybody else. All right. Let me see. A lot of people in here. But yeah, go to iTunes and get that Flex Troll album, Grinding for a Green Card. Great album. All right. Um, let's get um Reformed Justice in here. Reformed Justice in here. Let's hear this. All right. Reform, what's up, bro? Turn your microphone on, Reform. Reformed. Hey, Bo, you all right? I'm good. There you go. What's going on, man? I'm good. It, se it seems like you want to turn Black Americans into Tim Scotts and Herschel Walker. Is that right? How so? Is that right? How so? You elaborate on that. How so? Yeah, turn them into Republican shields and sellouts. So if people vote Republican, they're a sellout? Yeah, if you, if you have them saying, I just love you, Trump. <laughs> Nobody said, who said that? Tim Scott, Tim Scott said that. But he's a Sambo. We're not, he's not our representative. Oh, is that right? Uh-huh. What's it, What makes you a sellout is somebody who's sitting up here subordinating Kamala, who's talking about greens in a bathtub and twerking and all of that stuff. You're an idiot would support that, but you, you would because you're a tether. Where are you from again? You never tell us where you're from. Where by are you way, from? By the way, you know, half the GOP hates Trump, half his own party. Don't give a him. what? Why are you telling me this? I'm not voting for them. So what oh, are you some, people, some people don't notice in, in the, in the chat folks, half the GOP, they know. Hates Trump. I'm they not know, voting for anybody. They I'm they not, know they know he's a liability. All the generals, all the professionals hate Trump. Anyone with a bit of common sense <clears throat> hates the, Trump. The corporate structure, because the corporate structure, they're the ones pushing the agenda. They need the immigrants to come in. No, as cheap, no, sir. because he's a liability to capitalism. Even the CIA are the biggest capitalists, right? And they hate. Trump. I, I'm not even a capitalist myself, but I know the stability you need to be to have capitalism. And Trump, 
No, you don't. No, sir, you're just babbling. I, I hate, I, you know, I hate when people who come, who flee from their homeland, try to give people geopolitical economic advice. What well, the look, nigga, what you need to do with the money? The, the dude, you came from a place where people are shitting in the streets. You cannot no, no. give. I came from a place that was ravaged by capitalism and the CIA. Uh, as and, and, the CIA, and the CIA um, assassinating our presidents. That instead of fixing it, you fled. So I don't know. I don't want none of your advice. Yeah, your but I still advice. know the damage. I still know the damage, though. So I still speak about the damage capitalism has caused. No, I don't want to hear it because you don't know what to do. You fled. It's, you didn't fix nothing, sir. So you can't give us advice at all about capitalism. Every year, nothing. every year when Trump was president, the CIA, FBI, every national security organization just kept on putting out Trump is um, inciting white supremacists. White supremacists are the biggest danger. White supremacists are the biggest danger. They hate Trump. He is too yeah. unstable. He's too white crazy. White supremacy is in Kamala's bedroom every night, my All right, she laid... That's just, that's just petty. Oh, and by the way, Nikki, that's a very don't, petty attitude you have, Nikki. You said if the... If the, if the Democrats came with solutions. Half of you are just being petty at this point. So if the Democrats came with solutions, you'll just flat out disagree and flat out reject it. That's that's not a position. That's just no, you being petulant. No, because they would come to us lying at this point, which is what they do. They lie so much. And we're just tired of them lying. We're not like you, Tethers. Y'all just sit up there and let people lie to you indefinitely to the point where you ain't got nothing. We don't want to get to that point. So we want to stop the lies, stop the liars, and let's take another route with this thing. And that's what we're doing, sir. Y'all know and Kamala. You know, Kamala has said, she, she, I've watched three instances where she said she supports reparations, right? In, twice and we, a and we've heard that woman say she's not going to do anything and that's, that's only been black people. So how's she going to support reparations when she said that with her full chest? But she also said three times, I support reparations. So, I'm going, so why, are you taking, why are you taking so the one time she did, she, she um, declined uh, versus yeah, the three yeah. times she accepted? What are you talking about? And she, what did she say as, as far as supporting reparations? Supported how? Yeah, she said she supports reparations. How? She on the Breakfast Club and um, with that minister, I forget his name. She said oh, no. she supports reparations. So, Because people will say they support reparations in the form of a study. So, no. How do you support? We got to bog people down Money. on an answer. No, yeah, exactly. See, this, is, this is a better approach. This is a better the, approach. No, no. She did not say that. She did not say that. Don't you lie through them little old Ebola lips. Don't you lie. This is what I'm saying. We don't want more liars. She never said that, sir. She never said she supports reparations with money. Why would I say that if you can look it up? Why would I just lie? Why would I just say that if you can just because, look it up? Because you were lying, Tether. She, she didn't okay, say that, That's just ad, ad hominems. Ad hominems. So. Jumbotron, where she said she support money, reparations in the form of money to foundational Black Americans and Black Americans. Where did she say anything about money? On the Breakfast Club. That's reparations, reparations is primarily money. No one thinks of anything else. But it's supposed to be, but they keep talking about a study, reparations in the form of education. Um, over there now, somewhere in Illinois, I think, they got a reparations program, but it's basically housing vouchers. It's not money. So people try to redefine what reparations is. So we're not letting people lie. This I'll, is I'll what tell you what, though. I'll tell you what, though. You you know what party all this reparations but, rhetoric is coming What you're not going to do is give us failed tether advice. This is what we're saying. You are failed tether. No disrespect. We can't get advice from you. You're just doing failed tether babble, sir. No disrespect at all. Tough love. We cannot get advice folks, from you. Folks, um, you notice that when you, you get greedy with Tariq and you actually bring up facts, he just goes into ad hominems, he starts attacking you out of haven't, nowhere. Well, you haven't brought up facts. You're just sitting here lying. And we're not believing and buying your lies. 
Kamala Harris never said she supports reparations in the form of money. You sat here and lied repeatedly. We're not going to have a lying tether sit here and do what lying tethers do. That's why you failed in your homeland. We don't like liars, sir. We've heard her Breakfast Club interview. That woman ain't never said she support reparations in the form of money. You understand? These people run trick bags on us. We heard her say what she ain't going to do for black people. We heard that. So you're not going to lie for if, this woman. If I'm she sorry. said she, she says she supports reparations. If she go get your ass off of here. That's what tethers do. Remember earlier what I said about energy. I don't want that low vibrational tether energy where they need some <clears throat> positive energy to suck off of with lies. I don't want to hear lying tethers. God, I don't want to hear that. They just switch from one lie to another. Yeah, she, she, she said money nigga. She said it on the breakfast club. No, she didn't. She said she was going to give money. Stop. This dude wants us to support Kamala so his cousins can get here. And we're saying enough of that. Stay right over there with them bush meat sandwiches. Stay right over there. All right, let's get um Sharif. Sharif in the building. What's going on, Sharif? What's up, brother? Um, are you willing to have like an open conversation with me? I'm always willing to have an open conversation in good faith, but go ahead. Okay, so I would be what you consider a tether. That's I'm right. Egyptian migrant, right? You're an Egyptian migrant. Aren't you in Canada? I'm in Canada too. Right. So I will preface everything with that. I actually, I completely agree. Uh, black Americans deserve reparations. And that is only included uh, and inclusive towards black Americans of right. black American ancestry. But what I want to talk to you and ask you about is why do a lot of people, FBAs, why do they hate Africans? What is there to hate from you Africans, you have to have something to hate. Well, I always see you guys denigrate Africans. You talk about Africans, cannibalism, and you you adhere to the tropes that the white supremacists talk about all the time. You hear us denigrating you? Yeah. No, not me, but like Nigerians. Like I've heard a lot of shit about Nigerians. FBAs talk about. Because what happens, no, because what happens is a lot of Africans will hop in our spaces denigrating us, talking about crime in Chicago, and we have to gently remind them, hey, man, you just ate a hyena back in your homeland. So that's <laughs> rating. That's like, hey, just kind of reminding people to kind of humble your damn self. Don't bring your ass over here pointing fingers at us, just like the young the lady who called earlier who said... When she came over, she heard negative things about black people. She's from Kenya. Kenya has the biggest slum in Africa, the Kilvera um, um, slum. It's like a million people in a big ass shanty town talking about negative images they heard of us. So it's like, okay, you got a lot of nerve. So you don't have anything to hate. What are we hating on your slums? Your okay, so, so if African immigrants were to stop talking shit about black people, would you be okay with not talking shit about Africans? Is that like what it is? It's just you're reciprocating? Is that what it is? No, when we talk about you when you come in our rooms, we just don't care. And also, all of the positive images of Africa, that's been us promoting that. We've been the ones removing the negative stereotypes and the negative images of Africa. It's been me with my movies, Scholars like John Henry Clark, brothers like Anthony Browder, Azra, Azra Cruze, Cruze I, I, I can't I'm, I'm, I'm throwing my brother's name off, but just so many other people, Renoko Rashidi, our scholars were the ones bigging up Africa and trying to take the negative um, stereotype away from Africa. Okay. So yes. We've been um, stomping for that. So over here and then denigrate us that's very disrespectful go ahead no i completely agree um i don't agree with any of the tropes like talking about black on black violence all this bullshit um it's disgusting and it's racist um but i will say like what i what i want to say is um there are like the western hegemony institutes 
neo-colonial pol- neo-colonialism on the African peninsula to the point where no African nation is allowed to establish their own form of trade. They abide completely and adhere to the Western, uh, what the West tells them to do in terms of how they mine their resources, who they're allowed to export those resources to, et cetera, right? And there have been 60 plus African leaders who have risen from the ashes, who have tried to oppose the Western hegemony. And every single one of them has either been assassinated, like in, like in the case of Gaddafi or Abdel Nasser in Egypt, or they've been ousted. And what I'm trying we, to say is we the, know this. Same, the same white supremacists uh, who are continuing to um, impoverish the black communities in America, those same ruling powers are doing the same thing in Africa, in the African okay. nations, right? And what, what my message is, if I may finish, if that's okay, my message is, is Africans and black Americans should be on the same side. We need to be united against white supremacy because white supremacy is affecting both of us. Okay, now here's the problem, okay? The problem with that is white supremacy does affect all of us. The problem is foundational black Americans, we look at white supremacy differently. They look at us as the same, but we look at them differently. We look at them as an oppositional force that we need to constantly oppose. Too many of you come over here and you're willing to play second fiddle and be flunkies for white supremacy. The problem is you get decimated over in your homeland and then you come over here and become Myron Gaines. You understand what I'm saying? No, no, no. I hate Myron Gaines. He's a fucking racist. A Myron fucking Gaines problem. I don't want to hear about that unity stuff and y'all send your damn Myron Gaines over here to us, brother. Y'all got... Y'all act like y'all don't send these these anti-FBA flunkies over here to denigrate us and they get with the white supremacists sounding just like them. We don't go over there and do that. We never do that. We're not over there trying to decimate and undermine the people and get into their political arenas telling them what they shouldn't get and what they don't deserve. When we go to Africa as foundational Black Americans, we always go over there to help. We always go over there bringing something to assist the people. Always. Tariq, brother. Also, you don't slow it down. And get this, you guys send your Cynthia Revos, you send all of your, your tethers and your, your leeches who sit up here and brag. There was a woman, we played a video of her, some African woman bragging about when I go over there, I go to tech. I'm not trying to help no one. I don't want to be unified. I'm coming to tech. I'm very poor and I'm coming to tech. A lot of them have that men mindset where they want to come among us after we done fought for them to get here, thinking that they're going to be reinforcement against white supremacy, because that's the reason why we fought to get African brothers over here. And then they started sending over the Sambos and the, the Bedwinches, and that's the problem. So if you want to talk about unity, they're going to have to get unified over there because they're not unified there. And they bring that same disunity over here. You guys have a gazillion tribes all over that place, knocking each other in the damn head for chicken bones. That has to be addressed there. You cannot sit up here talking about what foundational black Americans hate. Nobody hates Africa more than damn Africans who flee. Let okay. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. So, so in regards to Myron Gaines, um, I've been on space with him. He hates my guts because I call him out all the time. He's a racist, and I don't. I completely agree with you. Um, Africans, African migrants who come here and simply try to denigrate Black Americans um, are disgusting in my book. It's a complete. It's a complete lack of understanding. It's a complete willingness to not become knowledgeable about the plight of black Americans throughout history. So I don't, I completely agree with you, but what I'm, what I want to say is I don't think that that is the majority of African migrants. Me, myself, my mother always educated me on the plight of black Americans. And I've always been an astute 
um, believer in uh, that black Americans deserve their reparations, that black Americans deserve to uh, to be equalized on the playing field. They deserve equality of opportunity and outcomes. Um, and I'm trying to say that maybe the Twitter sphere, it seems like on Twitter, on the on Twitter spaces, there's a preponderance of racist people in general. And that also includes Africans and people like Myron Gaines. And what I'm saying is maybe and here's and yep. then, Oda, because we're not going to reduce them to just being on Twitter, because what happens is the Myron Gaines types ends up becoming law enforcement. Myron Gaines worked for Homeland Security. Let's be very clear. This dude worked for the government at one point. This dude was a, a federal officer. That's when that becomes dangerous. Think about it. This guy with those anti-Black views was in a position to detain us. And they put a lot of these people who were immigrants in law enforcement positions, and they have that same mindset that they have on Twitter, and they take it out in the streets. We saw what just happened to Tyreek Hill when he was detained over there in Florida on his way to his football game. Every one of those cops had damn accents. You understand? So we get these immigrants who come over here, and we're told that we're the same because we're under white supremacy, and then they come over here and join forces with white supremacy against us. So that's not a selling point anymore. Let me get my brother McCall to chime in on this. Brother McCall. Great minister of code. How art thou? I'm good, brother. How are you? What would you like to say to Mr. Sharif? Mr. Sharif, how are you, sir? Uh, you have me blocked, brother. I don't know why. I'm going to tell you why. You're a hypocrite. Uh-oh. Your government at this present moment is organizing with the Somalis to help blow up the Ethiopian dam. You're an Arab. You're not an indigenous Egyptian. Your government has been threatening Ethiopia for at least five years to blow up a dam that they essentially paid billions of dollars of their own money to use this Nile Valley water to facilitate power that they desperately need. Why is your government organizing with a rogue state to attack the Ethiopian government? Answer that, sir, since you're a man right. of unity. Yes. So funnily enough, I just closed the space where I was talking about how I am anti-Egyptian because as, as long as my government continues to support um, any sort of repression of any peoples. This includes the Palestinian peoples. And the Egyptian government is complicit in the genocide in Gaza. The, they are also complicit in what you're talking about. So you'd be, you might be surprised. You might unblock me after I, what I'm yeah. saying. But I am not belligerently patriotic about Egypt. I hate my government. I hate Sisi. I think he's a garbage, disgusting human being. But I think he is a Manchurian candidate. He is controlled by the American imperial co imperial system, right? And he and this has been the way for the past 50 years since they assassinated Abdel Nasser way back in the 60s. The American government is a controlled puppet regime of America, and the purpose of it is to institute havoc and chaos and decay and it is, and what, what you're talking about, you're exactly right, but it is because the government is controlled by by the American imperial system okay. and by white supremacy. And, but, the, so, but, but, so, but let me finish, let me finish so here. Let me just finish. Hold on. It, it, it wasn't the American government. It wasn't the American government, it wasn't the American government that gave the Egyptian government rights over the Nile Valley water. It was the British government. Yes, but who inherited everything from the British? It was the Americans, right? Sir, that law should have never been enforced 
is outdated. It's these people's water. You have no rights over these people's water. So it's hypocritical for you to even blame it on the Americans. Your government generates billions of dollars in tourism money selling the ancestors and how much of those who built, money? selling the ancestors of those who built that country you call Brother Egypt. Mikkel. Right? How much right? Brother Mikkel, how you're, much you're, you're wrong three times. So don't talk about unity and don't try to blame blame it on the American government. No, this Mikhail, is what you no, do. No, it has to be blamed on the American government because, because. So the American it, government is forcing your government to, right, to make billions of dollars off of tourism, digging up. No, the Egyptian government. Sophocles, mummies, if you peeing listen, on pyramids. That's the American government. That's you. you that's your culture. You're antagonizing me right now. And if you would just listen for a second, you would understand I'm not did, your enemy. You just uh, did you hear? Did place. you hear what I said? Did you hear yes, what I, I said? Is it true or not? Is it true yes. or not? If I okay, heard everything what, you said, what is your you, answer to that? Will you let me talk, brother? Okay. Go ahead, Sheree. Go ahead, yes. Sheree. So, okay, so you're the the Egyptian government is corrupt, but what I need you to understand is the vast majority of Egyptian people do not stand for what the government is doing. That applies to what they're doing with Sudan. That applies to what they're doing with Ethiopia. That applies to what they're doing in Palestine. Okay. And I need to make this clear. Okay. The government is corrupt and the government is controlled by America. And it has been for the past 45 years, 35 years of which were instituted by Mubarak. Now, also keep in mind that most of those tourism dollars are st were stolen and usurped by Mubarak. Mubarak, when he was killed, was worth over $150 billion, okay? So when we're there has to be a comparison made between the peoples of Egypt and the government. The government is completely corrupt, and they will continue as long as their government is a puppet regime of America, will continue to be corrupt and continue to usurp the taxpayer dollars, will continue to usurp the American aid, $1.2 billion a year given to Egypt every single year, which is given to mostly the politicians and the, and the military generals. But the, but the Egyptian peoples do not stand for any of this. They are not okay with what's happening to Su the people in Sudan, the people in Ethiopia, and the, and the people in Palestine. There you go. Uh, thank you so much. Let me close that out. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody got their answers in. I think that was a, a lively discussion. I mean, let's, we're going to move on to some different topics here before it gets too, too late. But thank Brother Mikhail and Brother Sharif for, for chopping it up. Um, and by the way, don't forget, guys, if you're in L.A., we got the... Um, September Soul Saturday event happening this Saturday at the Hidden History Museum. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com and get your tickets for that, hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Let's get um, Lucky Patel in here. Lucky Patel. And then we'll get ATH. Lucky Patel and ATH. I can't pronounce your name. It's um, kind of an illegible thing going on here. Lucky Patel, what's up? Uh, uh, can Lucky go, or you want me to go? You go ahead. Lucky ain't saying nothing. Okay, yeah. What I wanted to say is, is that like I, I saw the space. I think I found it through Twitter, and it was talking about Haitian. Why Haitians are upset with FBA? And look, I, I heard about the FBA, but my issue is, is that you see these immigrants. Uh, first of all, I think if they came here legally, I think they're Americans, you know. So, but I feel there's an agenda of splitting up black people in this country and in this day and age where the economy in America is doing horrible right now, this is a time where all nationalities of whether Caribbean, African, South American, of African descent should be uniting and sticking together. Because in, in this day and age, you see how Mexico, people used to make fun of Mexicans coming here. Now Mexico, no one in Mexico wants to go to America because their economy is doing good. So black people, I'm not like a pan-Africanism, but we should be working together and building our businesses together. And I see it. Where are you from? Where are you from? 
Well, I, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. My parents are Nigerian. I'm currently working in Alaska right now. Okay. Well, then, if that's the case, how come the Nigerians set up their own little enclaves when they get to Brooklyn and New York? They set up their own little enclaves. And, you and can my thing is, people of all kinds, if you go to Flatbush and you go to Harlem, you see people eating in the Caribbean restaurants, the Trinidadian restaurants, the African stores. You see them doing business with each other. You do see it. It is but possible. You go to Harlem, there's like a whole street of nothing but Africans. The whole street. But let's be honest here. If you go to Flatbush right now, out of all the gentrification and all the businesses, the businesses that lasted are the people, the black Americans that kept their brown brownstone houses and the Caribbeans that kept their restaurants and the African that crept the correct that kept their stores. So it is possible for blacks to work together. Maybe some yeah, people we do that already. But the thing is, we still have a lineage that's unique. Just like they have a lineage that's unique. Why is it all of a sudden divisive when we acknowledge our lineage? You grew up in Brooklyn. They have the Caribbean Day Parade every year. Is that divisive? That, but th that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, I'm not against black Americans for getting the reparations. I'm for it. And I'm for, and I respect Black History Month. I respect people that came from slavery and people have the grand, you know, a lot of history in that regard. My thing is that in this day and age, we have to stick together even you talk about the the labor day parade in eastern parkway that's a blessing i, I think that's a good thing you know that's this happening and i saw there was a haitian girl on twitter she was made fun of just because she wore uh her flag of her country in that same parade and you know it's, it's i think it's very disrespectful in my opinion i think we should be working together i love black people i think black is beautiful whether you have a bad hairline or a good hairline, whether you're six foot ten or you're six foot one, I think black is beautiful, at all shapes and sides. Whether you're dark skin or light skin. Hold on, slow down. But why does the we should work together conversation only goes towards us when we acknowledge our lineage? Um, the Haitians and Nigerians and Jamaicans, all of these people, when they acknowledge their history and their lineage. Well, that's fine. Nobody says, hey, let's all sit together. They are allowed and they are celebrated when they acknowledge their lineage and history. It's only a problem when we do it. We're not saying be divisive. We're just acknowledging our unique history as foundational Black Americans. You translated that into divisiveness. I'm cool with Nigerians. I'm cool with Haitians. I'm cool with Jamaicans. I'm oh, cool no, with I respect that. See, now what you said, I respect that a lot because I. Right. All I'm saying is, I've been in other spaces. Maybe there's other FBA people that don't sound that don't talk like you, where they're being, they were literally saying <laughs> how but dude, every you person. Play, okay, you don't want to play that game. Well, I was in an FBA space and they had said something janky because um nigerians somalians all of these people they say the jankiest shit on social media they have they took over clubhouse the clubhouse act is a bunch of immigrants hating on us that's literally all they do over there so you don't want to sit up here and play the well they're doing it on social media so that represents the whole culture because a lot of non-FBA people, they have a horrible reputation. Of I, I agree. I, I can I can agree on that. But my thing is, is like when with Nigerians, like we can't put them all in the box. Like if we are being honest, like Damson Idris is Nigerian. Idris Elba is Ghanaian. There's different shades of Nigerians. They don't all think the same. There are Nigerians that are on the guy that played the guy on Jedi is Nigerian. You, you know, so it's like not every Nigerian thinks the same. It's 2024. <laughs> There's some people that are Nigerian, even like me, myself. You know, I'm 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 not even considered because I wasn't born in Nigeria. I don't have any. I've never been there. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, where I respect black culture. So my thing is, all I'm thinking, saying is, if we can work together, and you know, that's my main message. And I I respect that you said that you're cool with other nationalities, and I really do appreciate because I I like I said, I'm not gonna bring that regard with other FBA people. So <laughs> that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Yeah, listen, man, us acknowledging our foundational Black American lineage, I hate when people try to flip that into divisiveness. They only do that to us because people are so used to us being the umbrella for all melanated people where everybody can kind of come and stake some kind of claim. They're so used to tethering off of us.
when we say, okay, um, we're going to do a little gatekeeping now because things are getting a little funny style out here and we don't want people dumping their trash, their cultural trash on us. So we're going to do a little gatekeeping. Oh, wait a minute. Now let's work together. Yeah. Work together means stay close enough so we can dump garbage on you. Let's be real. When people say, hey, FBAs and other people, we all need to work together. You're the one who separated yourself. When you got your little businesses, you separated from us. You make sure we don't get no money from your businesses. Y'all got your little churches that y'all go to. Well, you, you set up little Christian churches where you, the, the Haitians are running it, the Nigerians are running it. You got your little, you make sure your, your money don't go to us. You think? Now, when you have some criminals that you need to pawn off culturally, you need us standing there so you can be like, hey, he's black. We all black now. If, if, if my Nigerian brother robs a bank, now we all the same people now. The same boat dropped him off. It's the same boat who dropped him off. Nah. That's why it, this goes back to the topic. This is why the Haitians are so upset now because they're on the hot seat with the white folks and we ain't running up letting that be dumped on us we're not letting that be a black issue that's not a problem that's not us hey they're talking about us black people they're talking about you you need to go handle that go holler at them they ain't talking about us we ain't no no we ain't doing none of that they ain't hollering at us they're not talking about us all right, let's get, um, let me see. Let's get American Roulette in the building. American Roulette in the building. What's up, American Roulette? All right, American Roulette ain't Ah, saying. shit, sorry, sorry. I there wasn't expecting you to call on me. No, no, uh, so uh, obviously it's past midnight now, but uh, so Saturday down there at the, uh, at the museum? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got an event Saturday night. Um, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Sat you right here in California? Yeah, hell yeah, I am. Dude, I've been listening to you for a long time, man. Like, if you hadn't noticed or not. I've been on, uh, I've been, anyway. But yeah, I'll just stop down. I mean, it, it seems like it'd be interesting. I, I be really fun. do like the, you know, the, I mean, no offense, but you're a bit dickish at times, but I understand you have to be because so many people, you know, that you have to deal with, you know, and speaking, but, uh, yeah, like face to face, you know, hanging out, like, I, I think it'll be interesting, you know, uh, I look forward to it. We, you know, there, we got, we got complimentary food, complimentary dinners. It's going to be great. Come and yeah. get we do I, you. I could bring you, some, I could bring some dessert if you like or something, anything. Yeah. You know? If you can bring some of them good Rice Krispie treats that you guys <laughs> Jeez. Oh, no. No, I haven't cooked those in ages. But we no, have no. Food, so I don't know if that's going to be a problem. I will tell yeah, my... No, no, no. I, I will say, man, hey, I'll dude. I mean, I know, I know that you're, you know... No offense. I'm, I'm going to tell my cook to leave some of the season... Oh, off the chicken. I want some of the chicken unseasoned. So we got we got a guest in there. We're going to have you come on through. So we're going to make sure not to put no seasoning on a couple of pieces of chicken so that you will enjoy it. <laughs> so, yeah, got to come on down, man. Got to come on down. Get your tickets at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. All right. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Yes, indeed. Let me see. Um, Lucky Patel, you in here? Hello, sir. Good day. Hey, this is Lucky Hello. Patel from India. Okay. Okay. So, sir, I want to say something. Respect all religions and humans, including black and white people. Okay. Be love yes. all peoples and invest in African countries and uh, love animals. Do yoga, meditation, and reject all types of uh, drugs. Uh, don't take drugs do yoga meditation never smoking never drinking love yourself love humans and uh, come in india i welcome you and follow me i will hold you follow back thank you sir tarikzi thank you sir okay what, what the hell was he talking about what the hell was that he just yelled a bunch of catchphrases 
you have to say no to drugs, say no to drugs, and um, give a hoot, don't pollute, and um, only you can prevent fires, fires, and um, um, up with hope, down with dope, and uh, really give to the community for unity, um, get in where you fit in. Um, he just started yelling a bunch of old catchphrases. What kind of shit was that? I guess he's trying to get him a green card, so he's just learning old American slang or catchphrases. Keep on trucking. He's he's learning old American catchphrases. I think he's practicing getting his green card. Yeah, he's really he's he calling us up practicing. A lot of these East Indians, they call up practicing their conversation to see if they can engage in conversation. Um, hello, my niggas. I am Mayim Patel. I am I want to let you know that I am down with Black Lives Matter. I am down with OPP. Yes, you know me. I am down with all of it. I am for the liberation of black people. Um, what they did to the Black Panther Party, I am not in agreement with it. Um, I just want everybody to stop gangbanging and start slanging. Um, I am the birds in the crypts and the vice lords and the gangster disciples and uh, the Boy Scouts and the Cub Scouts. I like Cub Scout cookies. They're so good. They're just saying, they're just saying random shit that don't be making no sense. You just look at a bunch of stuff in the media and just kind of regurgitate stuff that they see in the media. So it's interesting what they do. That's real interesting. Um, but shout out to Patel. Hopefully, you know, he gets it together. Um, let me see. We got a lot of people in here still. Um, yeah, almost 1,500 people in the middle of the night. Um, speaking of musty, Patel reminded me of must. Um, get the root work deodorant, guys. Root work deodorant. You get that at rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com. Very good deodorant. You guys are going to love it. Also, as you can see in the Jumbotron, my good sister Nikki posted up the album called Grinding for a Green Card. The album is available now. You guys can go to iTunes and all of these other streaming platforms and get the album. It's a phenomenal album. Grinding for a Green Card by Flextro. We got a lot of hot songs on there, ladies and gentlemen. All right, but listen, let me get up out of here, guys. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Get the books there. Give a contribution to the museum and also get your tickets for Saturday. And join me. We got a lot of great food, great drinks is going to be popping. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com. 